Hey, hello everybody, and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm Four One Nine Seven Five, and today we're taking the brand new Land Rover Defender down our rally track. <laughs> So last week we took the Bentley Continental Supersport down our rally track. I was hopeful that vehicle was going to beat the Lamborghini LM002, our fastest car down the course so far. Unfortunately, it couldn't quite match that time. It was four seconds slower. Still, that put the Bentley in third place, a very respectable time. So as promised, today I have got a vehicle that is hopefully going to beat the Lamborghini um, it has been our reigning champion since episode 2. So today I have chosen the brand new Land Rover Defender. So um, let's have a little look what we can do with this thing. It is all-wheel drive. Uh, it starts off in C-Class, so we've got a lot of room for upgrading. Uh, so this thing is going to be well into the 1,000 horsepowers when we're done. But as I said, it is all-wheel drive, so hopefully the traction in that should help it. And of course... I mean, look at it, it's a massive off-road vehicle, just like the Lamborghini was, so I'm hoping that is going to help this thing um, beat the Lamborghini's time. Now, if you haven't seen the series before, basically what we do every Wednesday, we take a different vehicle in the game down a specially built rally course. It's basically the first two miles of the gauntlet, and um, we pick all kinds of different cars against each other some all-wheel drive some rear-wheel drive some front-wheel drive now the only sort of rules of this series are the vehicles will be upgraded to s1 class and they must keep their stock drivetrain that means all-wheel drive vehicles will remain all-wheel drive and front-wheel drive vehicles front-wheel drive rear-wheel drive vehicles will remain rear-wheel drive now the land rover as i've said already is all-wheel drive from the get-go so that is good we have a couple of engine swap options and we are going to have to do an engine swap for this to get it up the pi i presume um, i have never actually modified the defender so that is going to be interesting um, so we set off with almost 400 horsepower 406 pound feet of torque the thing weighs over two tons so it's not a light vehicle um, it weighs nearly two and a quarter tons um, but hopefully that is going to press the wheels into the ground more and give us a little bit more traction so i'm not really sure what engine we want to go for we've got the five liter v8 <clears throat> i believe that is out of the fox body mustang possibly i could be wrong on that We've got the 3 litre straight 6 turbo and we've got the 7.2 litre V8 which is the Hemi or the Dodge Charger. So hmm, I want to go for as least horsepower as possible and that sounds a bit counterproductive but the less horsepower you have the less your wheels are going to be spinning and hopefully the, the more traction you're going to have and the faster lap time you're going to put down. But for PI sake, I think we're going to have to go with the straight six. So we'll go with that. Now, what have we got as far as bumpers go? Um, we can go for this bull bar on the front. Not a fan of that. And we can go for the Forza Aero, which I'm not a fan of that. They don't really provide much extra downforce. And they're just going to add drag and add more weight. So not really bothering with those now all the vehicles will be fitted with rally tires unless they cannot be fitted with rally tires in which case they'll be fitted with the off-road race tire compound this vehicle does have the uh rally tire option so we're going to go with that now what kind of widths can we get we've got uh 255 st at the front we can go to a 295 and on the rear, 295s all round. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, let's have a little look what else we can do with this thing. We are up into A class already, so I don't think it's going to take too much more to get this thing uh, to where we want it. Now, I believe the vehicle already comes with like an 8 speed gearbox. I'm not a fan of loads of gears, so we'll just put the 6 speed in there. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and put in the rally diff as well. Uh, brakes, let's see what kind of brakes we can get. We can slap on the best brakes we can. We'll go for off-road springs and dampers. That does lift the vehicle ever so slightly, but obviously it is already an off-road vehicle, so it's going to have pretty good suspension travel from the get-go. Um, we'll go for full weight reduction. That is going to take nearly a thousand, well, pretty much exactly a thousand pounds off the vehicle. So we'll go ahead and do that. Let's see what kind of engine upgrades we can go for. So we've got the race fuel system. We'll throw that in there. Race ignition. I think we're just going to go for race everything, to be honest. We'll upgrade the turbo as well. We're well into the 1,000 horsepower region now. 1,270 horsepower, 901 pound-feet of torque. The thing weighs £4,000 now, so it's just under 2 tonnes, which is not too shabby. And we've got a 3.4 litre engine in there with a the turbo. So this thing is going to get up and run, I think. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of tuning, paint the vehicle, and then we're going to have three attempts at beating the Lamborghini's time of 2.05. So I will see you at the rally track. Okay, here we go for our first run in the newly painted Land Rover. I've gone for this JMS racing livery. It's probably the best racing livery I could find for this thing. There weren't many, I'll be honest. Now, let's see if this thing can live up to that race heritage. Land Rover obviously having a good off-road racing pedigree. I'm hoping with that 3 litre straight 6 turbo, this thing is going to be a monster on this course. It already feels very, very fast. It's not getting a lot of wheel spin. It is dealing with those water splashes as expected. We're just having to keep this thing controlled through the corners. I apologize if my commentary is lessened today. I really want to beat that Lamborghini as much as I did enjoy that vehicle. I want to see a different vehicle on that first place position. And I think the Land Rover has the potential to do it. It reckons this thing can do 225 miles an hour. So let's see if we can get somewhere near that number on our off-road course here. Changing down to second for the hairpin. A little bit of understeer coming out of the hairpin and on the grass, but nothing terrible. Coming into the two right-handers, slowing it down early. Accidentally changed down to second. I meant to leave it in third there. There's a lot of focus going on in this run. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get it around these next couple of corners. We are turning in nicely for the left-hander there. That was a very nice corner. A little bit of oversteer maybe, but nothing to be concerned about. Now coming up to the horrible corner here. We're out a little bit wide on the exit, but not terrible. That was very clean as far as other passes we have seen. Last couple of corners here, we're up to the two minute mark. This is a very, very promising lap time. I don't think we're quite going to beat that Lamborghini, but it could certainly be a second place for the Land Rover. We have beat the Bentley Continental from the last episode by a whole second. The Bentley putting down a 209, the Land Rover a 208. And for our very first run on this car, I'm still learning. I'm still learning the course with this car. A 208 has very much got the potential of beating that Lamborghini. All right, here we go for our second run in the Land Rover. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to be a little bit braver if possible. We've already put down a good lap time. We've got another run if we mess this one up. So I'm not worried about this lap. This is going to be all about figuring out what we can actually do with the Land Rover and where we can pick up a little bit more speed. This thing is insanely good through the water splashes. The problems come when you chuck this thing into the corners. The weight of the vehicle makes it want to slide a little bit. So you've got to control that. But if you can control that, the Land Rover is a very capable vehicle. I'd like to say the Lamborghini was better, but I don't know. This uh, Land Rover is putting down an impressive, impressive show here. 
<clears throat> now coming on to the straight section here this is typically where some of the low slung vehicles like the Pontiac and uh, the GT70 had issues with it being a little bit bumpy the Land Rover soaks up the bumps very nicely though coming into the hairpin will change down to second I did lock the brakes up a little bit coming into the hairpin which caused a little bit of understeer but nothing terrible coming down the second straight here soaks up the bumps lovely coming into the two right handers a little bit slow through the right handers there could have been a little bit braver now up the hill and into the shallow left turn I'm going to brake a little bit so we don't overshoot that corner fourth gear was perfect through that corner actually so we will make a note of that coming up to this corner this is the worst corner on the entire track to get right I haven't quite got it right we're out a little bit wide but nothing to be concerned about we didn't hit the motorbike on the exit so that won't have cost us too much time this is an impressive lap time from the Land Rover here if we can just keep this thing in line I think this could be at least a second place for the Land Rover coming down the hill now let's see what we can do it's going to be a 207 we'll have to wait and see a 207.127 that is going to put the Land Rover in third place already and we still have another run to go we've shaved two seconds uh, uh sorry one second off our lap time if we can at least shave another second off our lap time that would put the Land Rover in second place We've got one more run. It has a very high chance of beating that Lamborghini if I can just keep this thing in a straight line. All right, our third and final run in the Land Rover Defender. This is where the pressure has got to... Uh, well, this is probably where the pressure is going to get to me. I'm going to try and keep it at bay as much as possible. I'm going to commentate a little bit less and just try and put down a good lap time here. We're already running in that corner a little bit too fast we locked the brakes on the exit which is not good this thing is going to be good through the water splashes though i'm going to slow it down nicely try and keep on that racing line keep the momentum going that is the key here all right coming up the hill now into the right hander again slowing it down but i want to keep that momentum going so i'm on the power through the turn this feels very, very good. A little bit of a slide through that corner, but most of the vehicles do slide. Okay, now we're on to the straight section. This is where the Land Rover is very good. It soaks those bumps up and gets the power down where we need it to. I think the uh, straight six was definitely the right choice to go for in this thing. I'm going to keep it in third in here, just to try and get that power down a little bit better. We are cleanly out of the corner, a little bit on the grass on the exit, but nothing terrible. Turned into that corner a little bit early, but again, nothing too bad. We got through the checkpoint, so that's the main thing. Up the hill now, going to change up to fifth to try and negate a little bit of wheel spin. Coming into the shallow left-hander, possibly a little bit slow through there, could have been faster. But again, it will all come down to what we can do in the final couple of corners i'm going to turn it in early for this corner and change down to four so we can get that power down we don't hit the motorbike so that's good slowing it down for these corners change down to third then we're on the run down the hill we've got to beat that five second lap time i don't think we're quite going to do it the Land Rover comes across the line at a 206.793. That is exactly the same as the Ford Focus RS from our first episode. Exactly. Which is pretty incredible, to be quite honest. So that is going to tie with the Ford Focus for second place. So the Land Rover Defender tied for second place with the Ford Focus RS, a 206.793. It has matched the Focus's time exactly to the tenth of a second, which is pretty incredible, actually. With a little bit more finesse and uh, possibly a little bit more tuning and a couple of more runs, this thing could have definitely beaten the Lamborghini. But unfortunately, the rules of this series dictate that the vehicle will only get three runs to prove its worth. 
Unfortunately, the Defender, I couldn't quite control the Beast enough to get it to beat that Lamborghini. But in a race, I think the Lamborghini and the Land Rover here would be a very, very close match indeed. I'm very happy with the Defender's lap time though. Hopefully you guys did enjoy this episode. If you did, make sure to subscribe so you stay up to date with next week's run. And if you did enjoy it, it'd be awesome if you could like the video. It just lets me know that you want me to make more of this video series. But until next week, I will see you all in the next video.